comes to the path of God, it's important that we acknowledge him. And I want to tell you that it will be an insult to Calvary that you will give your time to do everything for yourself. And when it comes to God's time, you're not getting his time. Praise the Lord. And that's going to be an abuse to the Calvary. So whatever, however, that you, have, you find yourself here today, please give God this time that He wants to spend with you. And I know that He will not leave you empty handed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. So my message today is not just like a message, it's a kind of um, advice. I'm going to point out some certain things that I want to advise you with. Praise the Lord. I want to advise you with. And you know, because it is you are there today. This message is direct to you. Praise the Lord. And then they said, when a child is being advised, another wise child sits and they listen. So while I talk to you, I see talk to other person who will like to listen. Amen. And then here what I said here, the things that you need to avoid so that you can have a happy marriage life. Because whatever thing that you see that people celebrate today, there are ingredients, there are materials, there are one or two things that they put together to bring that thing out. Praise the Lord. They have to bring water, they have to bring sand, they have to bring cement and mix it together. They will have a solid block. So something has to be mixed together in order to have what you are looking for. And then today, by the grace of God, I'm not going to tell you what you need to add, but because what really bless marriage is not what you add, it's what you avoid. Praise the Lord. It's what you avoid. So by the grace of God, the few things that I think that you need to avoid to have a wonderful family marriage. Praise the Lord. But first of all, before I tell you the things you need to avoid, I want to bring to your understanding what marriage is all about. Praise the Lord. What marriage is all about. Marriage is not about age. Marriage is not about size. That I am grown now. That I have, I have height now. That I am fit to marry. Marriage is not about age. My age don't they pass me. I don't reach. Praise the Lord. So it's not about how old you are. It's not about how big you look. But it's this thing that they call maturity. Maturity is an ability that is found in a man, found in a woman, that gives them the decision to start whatever thing they are starting. Praise the Lord. Is anybody know what I'm saying? So, marriage is about maturity. Maturity. Ability to know that you are ready for it. Maturity is that ability inside of you that makes you to come to understand that I am ready for this marriage. Because you may be ready and you don't know you are ready. There are so many ready people out there who don't know they are ready. And if by the time they want to try to get ready, then it has passed. Can I say this to somebody? Listen to me. Join life is a journey. And as you join me in life, there are so many things that comes your way. Life is a journey. Somebody say life is a journey. And then marriage is part of the fruit you pluck as you journey in life. Am I talking to people here? Please, can I have the audience? Marriage is part of the fruit that you pluck as you journey in life. This is not how you wear when you wear 
born. You were born one day and you start growing and you grow up to this age that you are now. So that tells you that life is a journey. You started from one month, two months, one year, three years, and some of you are 30 years, 40 years, 20 something years. That means you have been journeying all the way from the day you were born up to this time. So that is what life is. That somebody will get to a particular time when his journey will end. Somebody will get to a particular time when his journey will be no more. But while you are still on journey, there are some certain things that you have to understand that you might be very, very ready for something, but you don't know you are ready for that thing. Because as you journey in life, you are not seeing what you are looking for. There are so many of you who are very, very ready to settle down. But because you think you are still in a journey, you don't know they are ready. So as you begin to know that you are ready for this thing, then as you move a journey, marriage becomes part of the things that you block as you journey in life. Is anybody hear what I'm saying? Somebody said, I am looking for money. I am looking for money. I want to look for money. I want to get money. Now, if you want to get money, that is a good decision. But while you are looking for money, as you pursue money, if marriage comes, collect it and continue pursuing money. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes, sir. So, as you are enjoying a life, marriage is part of the things you collect on the way. On the way. You collect it, you enjoy it, and you continue going. And when money comes, you collect money, and you continue going. Praise the Lord. Because if you pass the time you're supposed to get married, and then you get to where you are going, that means when you want to get married now, you will now go back to where you start from. So that you can see if you can see the fruit that you lost or you pass by on the way. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes, sir. So somebody can be ready and yet you don't know that he is ready. But I pray may you discover that you are ready in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I say may you discover that in Jesus' name. Yeah. Now many marriages fail because of this thing they call maturity. Older people fail in marriage and young people succeed in marriage what happened what is the difference between that this man who was 40 years old 45 years old could not hold his marriage for two years but this boy who was 22 years old has kept his marriage for more than 15 years what was the difference praise the lord what was the difference what makes it different that an old man could not keep his marriage but young boys keep their marriage because success in marriage is not by age it's by maturity it's by somebody know that i am ready for this thing i am ready for this thing hallelujah that somebody should know that is ready for this thing. now listen to this one adult boy got up one day and tell his father that he wants to get married Can you control that baby, please? So, the boy got up from can I can I hear your can I get your yes, please? So this young man got up one morning and then and went to his father and he said to his father that he wants to get married. And the father pretended as if that he did not hear what he said. And he repeated it again that I want to get married. And then the father pretended the second time as he didn't hear what he said. And then the third time, the father looked at him and said, Young man, what are you saying? He said, Daddy, I want to get married. The father looked at him. He said, The guy said, I have a house. I have a job. I even have a car. So what am I waiting for? Look at my age. I'm up to the size. And the father said, I will give you one year. One year of, uh, one year, um, what do I call it now? I will, I will give you one year test to prove if you are really, you know, mature for it. He said to the guy, go and boy, buy a puppy dog and train that dog for six months or one year. Then I will give you my blessings. The boy says, is that the condition? He said, yes. And he went and boy, buy a puppy dog and keep the dog in the house. And then one day he went to work. And then before he could return from work, this puppy dog has messed up his house. You know, young boys, 
he make his house very neat, clean house as a young guy, you know. And then before he comes from work, the puppy dog has messed his house. Shit everywhere, piss everywhere, on top of his, his bed, he cheers everywhere, shit, mess up the whole place. And the guy, the boy got home and saw how the house was looking. With that anger, he brought the dog out and smashed the dog on the wall. And they brought out a shovel and divided the dog into two. And then, and then throw the dog away. The father came out. What happened? So look at my house. See my room. See how this dog, you the dog, messed up my house. And the father laughed. And the father said, "You are not ready for marriage." You know what the father said? He said to him, "He said women could be worse than this dog." And that means if you get married tomorrow, and then and you come back and see that your wife did something similar, that means you are going to kill somebody to kill. So I am not ready to bless you for this thing because you are not ready. Because he thought he had money. Because he thought that he's big, he thought he could handle marriage. Marriage is not about size or age, it's maturity. It's maturity. You can be, it can be 27 years, but you are more mature than that man of 45 years. It's an ability inside of you. So, bro, what I am saying to you is this to have a successful marriage, to have this marriage last until Christ come, if it happens, he have to look at that thing they call maturity. Praise the Lord. And this maturity, there is a way we know that this person is mature. Because there are some certain things that will happen you overlook it. Amen. You are talking about marriage in the church. This scripture must be read. There is a blessing in this scripture. Genesis chapter 2 from verse 24 said, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and then hold fast to his wife and they shall become one flesh and the man and his wife we are both naked and then we are not ashamed praise the lord there are two things i want to point out here number one he said for this reason for this cause for a day like this, for whatever reason why you want to settle down, it's the reason why this man shall leave his parents. Now watch this. He didn't say that this boy shall leave his parents. Because it can be 45 years, you are still being papa boy, papa guy. You know, those 50 years old men, 55 years old men that refuse to get old. They wear papa cap, they still wear trousers here. A 48 year old man still wearing trousers around his waist. Praise the Lord. If you look at that man, you know that this man is not responsible. Think about it. Somebody like my dick now. You see him wearing trousers here, put it there. We have papa cap, papa guy. Don't even be old. But don't attitude make you know that this person is not responsible and you cannot keep marriage. So he said, for this reason, a man, who is that man? What is man? Man is that maturity. So he said, man is maturity. So he didn't say, for this reason, a man where gave be a beer. No, he's not talking about the man where gave be a beer. He's talking about somebody that is mature, somebody that carried the ability. To make sure that this thing that God is committing in my hands, I will respect it and it shall last forever. Praise the Lord. That is the man he's talking about. So until you become that man, you will marry 20 times. That was why the father of that young man could not give his blessing. Because the boy thought that he was a man. They never knew he was not a man. The father tried him with the puppy dog. Under three months, he killed the dog. And the father said, you can't marry a woman. Because sometimes women can do something that is more than that dog. Praise the Lord. Now, look at what happened here. Matthew chapter 19. Can somebody read it for me? Matthew chapter 19. I want to draw in these two places now that I share with you this. Matthew chapter 19. From verse 5, 8 and 9. Somebody read it for me if you have a microphone. I said for... 
and said, but this God, Jesus said, for this reason, shall a man leave father and mother, shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and shall cleave to his wife. Now Jesus is making reference of what happened in the old, where marriage began, how God instituted marriage in the first place. And Jesus made reference to that very place where we read in Genesis. And he said again, Then dead one shall be one flesh. And both of them shall be one flesh. flesh. Therefore, they are no more one, but one flesh. Therefore, there are no more two people, they are one flesh. flesh. What therefore God has joined together. Therefore, whatsoever thing that which God has joined Let together. No man put Let no one put asunder. They oh. say unto him. And they say unto him. Listen to this. Moses then command to give a written of the word. If Jesus said anything that God joined together, let no man put asunder. And the question came and said, Why did Moses then commanded to put asunder? Why did Moses allow asunder? to enter into marriage. Is it because Moses' law is stronger than God? And to, and to put her away. And then Jesus replied back to them. He said unto them. And Jesus said unto them. Moses because of the hardness. Hard, hardness Moses because of the hardness of your heart. Of your heart. Suffered you to put away. And allow you to put away your wife. Now hold on there. Here yeah, Jesus made the reference up. Listen to me. He said That God said, for this reason, a mature person, the man that has this capability, that has this capacity, that carries this maturity on the inside, which is not by how he look, but how he can manage and control things that come his way. And he said, for this reason, shall that man leave his parents and cleave unto his wife, and the both of them shall become one person. Now Jesus made reference to that, and Jesus continued. Saying that whatever thing that God have joined together, let no man put asunder. And there came the haters from somewhere saying, if one God had joined together and no one should put asunder, why then did Moses allow the seed of asunder to come into marriage so that people can divorce? And Jesus in reply said, it was not so from the beginning. But the reason why Moses permitted it. To divorce your wife is because make you no go kill her. Because of this violence in marriage, this domestic violence, this matrix, this this inability, this thing that shows that you are not matured yet. Moses permitted you to let it get go because you are not ready. You are not mature. You can't manage marriage. And he said, God said, Moses said. He allowed you to let her go because of your immaturity, because of the hardness of your heart, because maturity begins from your heart. It begins from your heart. The moment God can take control of your heart, the moment God can take control, take place in your heart, then every other thing that springs out from your heart becomes the reverse of joy. Praise the Lord. That is why it's very dangerous not to break each other's heart. Because heart is dangerous. That your maturity has its pillow on the bed inside your heart. Inside your heart. So why did they divorce? What is the reason for their divorce? Because of immaturity, because of the hardness of men. So if you remove hardness, if you remove immaturity and become mature, there will be no room for their divorce. You see that? There will be no room for their divorce. But I pray. That your marriage will last until Christ comes. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So why? What do I need to avoid to keep this marriage going? Number one, avoid unnecessary anger. What did I say? Avoid unnecessary anger. Whether the man know, whether the woman know, every little thing don't flame up. You don't first. I the first. I the first. I the first. Not inside your marriage. Somebody said, you know not me, my mouth is not good. If I give you my mouth, I go find where you go hide. That is what you got from your father's house. But now that you have given into a man and you are going to run your home, that shouldn't be in there. Can I say this to you? If you want to run a successful marriage, whatever you learn from your mother's house may not work 
in your marriage. That is because in your mother's house, you wake up nine o'clock in the morning to eat and then go to school. But in your husband's house, you must wake up by five. So if you enter to wake up by nine o'clock, it will not work. So however you are trained at home, when you come to marriage, there's going to be another kind of of of, 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 of restructure. Can I say this, sir? Can I say this to everybody? In marriage, how you start the foundation of your marriage from the beginning determines where it's going. Is that what I'm saying? However, you started it when you guys were cutting. As you take start from that time, I say they go. So if if the man brought his own character, the same character he had before you met him, and he refused to amend and change so that things will blend, that means if you continue with that marriage, that man will not bend. Can I tell you this? Anything that does not bend breaks. Anytime you want to make it bend by force, it breaks. It doesn't work. Praise the Lord. So what do you do? You start the foundation. How you want your marriage life to go. Starting from the beginning. And you that is a woman, that which you left for your mother's house, take some from there. And then apply the one that God has given unto you so that it can work. Praise the Lord. I one small girl, one time that got married, very small little girl, that something was told her about a business. Can, can you join this business? Would you like to join the business? She said, okay, I will tell my husband first. Very little girl that just entered marriage, not even up to six months. I said, I will discuss with my husband first before I will know if I will join. It is our decision that will not determine it. But there are some of you that something will get into. You just rush into it without discussing with your husband. That is to say that you are not ready for marriage yet. Praise the Lord. So number one thing you need to do to avoid this going pathways. May go your own mind, go my own. May we break, may we destroy this marriage. Divorce, as Jesus said, because of the hardness of your heart. So one of the things that will make this marriage not to work is when you allow unnecessary anger, you know, to come into your marriage. So avoid unnecessary anger, number one. Then number two, avoid indifference. Avoid indifference. Indifference means that time when somebody says, I don't care. You know, consign me. Praise the Lord. No matter what happened, any way they happen, you know, consign you. Your family never eat, you know, consign you. Your wife, they you know where you know, consign you. Indifference. Can I say this to you, sir? Never you enter into your house. Woman, never you enter into your house, wherever you come from. Whether you come from work, or you come from any time you come inside your house, never you enter into your house without looking at the face of your husband or your wife. Praise the Lord. Can somebody take that child out, please? Amen. Is anybody right said now? So never you, Sister Judith, and then Brother Dixie, never you enter into your house without looking at the face of your wife. Never you enter into your house without looking at the face of your husband to know if one is well. So if you just come back from work, you drop your back, you don't want to enter the tomb, go back by your wife, then her face is frowned and you don't want to care. That is indifference. And there's no woman you will always abandon like that or avoid like that that will be happy. You must always look at the face of each other. Your countenance is the expression of the voice from your heart. Anything that is in your heart that you cannot say, in your face, it can be expressed. You can look at somebody's face and know that this, thing, this person is not happy. Praise the Lord. So avoid indifference. Avoid indifference. Amen. So, number three, avoid any form of argument. Marriage must go far. Avoid argument. Because argument is the result of foolishness. Argument is the product of foolishness. Anywhere you see argument, look very close, there's a foolishness somewhere. 
But foolishness will make the woman not to submit, not to agree. The man not to submit, not to agree. They will argue every time for something that does not matter. They argue over everything. So anytime you see people arguing, you argue on this, you argue on that, there is foolishness somewhere. Praise the Lord. So avoid unnecessary argument, which is a product of foolishness. You can know a marriage that is built on the on the, on the foundation of foolishness but how much they can argue every time so always discuss your plans together it doesn't matter who bring the idea but discuss it together don't always do things because now you get the money and then you don't want to let the other person know praise the lord okay number four avoid blindness avoid blindness Praise the Lord. See where you are going to. Avoid blindness. See your future together. Praise the Lord. What did I say? See your future together. If I ask you now, sir, from now to six years' time, where do you see this marriage? From now to six years' time, ten years' time, where do you see this marriage? What position do you see that this marriage will get to at that time? That is, you must know where you are going. You must know where you are driving to. This marriage, by now, in this, in this, uh, in, in, in this, um, in this, uh, let's say, let's two years, we are going to do marriage at the back. So that means, in next two years, you might be still on. And in the next five years, then me and my wife see where we are going. Every time you begin to see future, and then both of you are in that future, that means the marriage will last. To so avoid blindness, like you know the sea. You know the sea said this thing, not the walk or in the walk. You know the sea said the road, the road, not the death. Avoid blindness. See your future together. And then drive to that direction. Then you will succeed in Jesus' name. Yeah. Number one is this. Number five. Avoid deafness. Always listen to each other. Listen to each other. Praise the Lord. Know what to do. Praise the Lord. So avoid deafness. Listen to your wife. Listen to your husband. Praise the Lord. Listen to do or not to do. Waiting the woman say this thing you don't like and like this. Listen. Waiting the woman say you don't like and like this. Listen. Your husband has told you stop this kind of. Thing that you are doing this kind of late night this kind of company you are keeping the man says he doesn't like it but you don't want to listen any time that what the man say is what he doesn't like is what you do that means you are heading to rock some of you are so stubborn and he gave my life the time you enter into his house and he enter into your life you don't have your life if you have your life you have the in your father's house now get my life, now get my life. You know, think everything I want to listen. The problem that you people are having is listening to those things they call marriage counseling, all those uh, uh, what are they called them? Um, motivational speakers, you know, telling you your 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 you, you are your husband is the head, you are the neck, and if the neck is not there, the head is not working, all those garbage that you are listening, is when you listen to those things finish, they come begin to raise shoulders with the man. Praise the Lord. I can tell you, sir. You see, that many women like to listen to those women. And most of those women that teach those things, look, they are married, but they are not married. I saw a popular marriage counselor, a woman, that counsels you how your marriage will work, how this one will do, how this one will do. Not too long, she got divorced. And in her confession, she said she don't care, she don't tie and no fit again. But I think great people. Listen to me. Success in marriage is when you say, I am ready. Some people will say, marry your mother. And if you want to marry a wife, marry your mother in your wife. Maybe because your mother loves you, marry your mother in your wife. Some say, marry your sister. Some say, marry your brother. All those rubbish. Marry your husband. Am I talking to somebody here? If you marry your mama, <laughs> In fact, there is no mother in a wife, like your mother inside your wife. You only are looking for a wife. I want to marry 
my sister in my wife. I want to marry my mother in my wife. I want to marry my father in my husband. I want to marry my brother in my husband. All those things are garbage. You can't marry your father. Who you will marry is your husband. And you that is a man, you must know that I am a husband and then be who you are. Can I say this? No matter what you are told, if you want your relationship to work, it will work. Relationship that works is not the hand of what you are told. It's in your own hand. It's in your own hand. Amen? Amen. It's in your way? In your hand. As I'm talking to him, I'm talking to you, young man. Also. I'm talking to you, young man. Also. It's not in what you hear. You can hear all of these things and you decide not to practice them. It will not work. A young boy thought he was wise. He don't want to listen to other people. Sir, I might not be old, but I get experience. If you look at my wife there, you always say I get experience. <laughs> oh, yeah. See this guy, see? If you look at her, you know that I have experience. For her to look like this, that is her own truth. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you see a married woman, that look beautiful, glowing, you know, coming out and everybody saying, Who be this one? Oh, oh, oh. Look at husband, he will seek for her. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Only God finish. Praise the Lord. So, when we talk, we talk out of the spirit. So, you young youth, listen to us. Because sometimes think we are worried. Just like a small boy one day, a very little boy, sir. He thought he was wise. And he saw a man who they call a wise man. And this boy said, I will meet this wise man and tell his wife with his wisdom. And then he said to the man, I know you're a wise man, but I have a butterfly in my hand. Tell me if the butterfly is alive or dead. And the boy said in his heart, if the man said, you hold the head of the butterfly. He said, if the man said the butterfly is dead, I will let it fly. I say you say. If you say the butterfly is alive, I will press the head. I say you say, I will kill the butterfly. So when he came to the man, I said to the man, tell me if this butterfly is alive or dead. And the man looked at him as an old man, no matter how wise you are, you cannot be wiser than we wait in this white hair. White hair, no thing. Sir, white hair, eh? Now addition, now age, now, 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 now experience. If I if, 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 tell you what, if, if, if you have a white hair on your head, sir, that white hair shows that you have gotten experiences. Somebody with that white hair should listen to you. So the young boy refused to listen to a man with wisdom. And he said to the man, tell me if the butterfly is alive or dead. He had the story. And then the young, the old man looked at him and looked at him deeply. And he, go, he went close to him and said, young man, the life of this butterfly or death of this butterfly is in your hands. And the boy said, say one thing now. He said, whether the butterfly will live or die is in your hand. It's not in your heart, it says your hand. It's in your hand whether the butterfly will be alive or dead. And that applies to everything that has to do with life. No matter who encourage you, if you know what makes your marriage work, it will work. The success of your marriage is in your hands. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So, and then number six, avoid secrecy avoid what secrecy. secrecy that means always be plain to each other be transparent don't hide anything praise the lord if you're a man any plan whatever thing that you want to do let your wife know first if you're a woman let your husband know first sometimes you do something free before you tell a man just because you think that the power is in your hands. Amen. Can I say this again? Every traditional man will beat you anytime you tell him something after you have done it. Can I talk again? I'm talking about traditional men. Men that are traditional. Can I say this? Men that are men are men that are traditional. Because in tradition, there are limits of things. And you can get tradition from the scripture. So men that 
that men are traditional men. So as a traditional man, you're supposed to discuss with him, I have 10 euros, but I want to use 10 euros to buy four. The man will say, go ahead, he go. But after you have bought the phone, you're not told him that I got 10 euros, you now want to have bought the phone. Why are you telling him now? If you had wanted him to know, you would have told him before you did it. <laughs> you would have told him before you do it. So, avoid secrecy and be transparent to each other. You know, when we read it in, the, uh, in Genesis, he said that both of them were naked and they were not ashamed. That is transparency. That is that they don't have secret. There was nothing they were hiding from each other. Amen. There was nothing they were hiding from each other. And once that kind of thing begins to happen, you will not be like Peter, who beat our sister to death. Oh. Mm. Yes. You will not be like Peter. Because we have so many Peters. And we have so many Osinachi. Osinachi does not deserve Peter. Because Osinachi would have still been alive if Peter had known his role as a husband, not as a beast. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In the kingdom where you and I belong, we don't beat, we are not beasts. We don't fight in marriage, we don't beat our wives, and we don't abuse our husband. Can I say this? Yes, what happened between Peter and Osinachi was why Moses said, give her divorce. And Jesus said, because of your heart is wicked. That was why it was permitted. Now take away the wickedness of your heart, then the marriage will work. Praise the Lord. May you not be a Peter. Yeah. I said, may you not be a Peter. Yeah. And may you not die like Christina. She also. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Yeah. So avoid secrecy. Then number seven, avoid company that will influence you negatively. Avoid company that will influence you negatively. Who are this company? People that will help you to run your home. People that will introduce you to another lifestyle. You know, there are companies you will keep. They will not tell you that as long as you listen to me, then the woman will be like that. Oh, ah, I for don't do it. When I for do it, I for don't make a sit down for ground. That is a friend telling you that. And there is a way they will pump that into your head. You begin to practice it. You begin to practice it. When a man is changing by being influenced from bad friends, the wife they know. That's why women, anytime they enter your life, they will try to, try to, you know, this one, this one, this one, I don't like them. Praise the Lord. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody here? So avoid the company that will influence you negatively. Now, before I say the last one, hear this, sir. Hear this. As long as you get married, if you are a man that have the wisdom of God and have and, and have focus or or, or, or what let's say and have um, have a drive, I know what you want and where you are going. Listen to me, brothers. Listen to me. Listen to me. Marriage is one of those places where friends live. Can I say it again? When you are married, sir, as a married man, now that you are, there are friends you don't need. Are you, are you with me? As a married woman, there are friends you don't need. You don't, you don't have to tell them not to come to your house, but they will naturally stop coming. I don't need somebody to hear me. They will not, the day you get married sincerely, there are some certain friends that will naturally stop coming to your house. Not because you fight, not because you're enemy, no, but their lifestyle can no longer be compatible with your new status. With your new status. Because if you allow them to continue, they will pollute your marriage. So they need to live naturally. Naturally. You see them living naturally. Sometimes you ask this boy, ah, oh boy, I don't see you again. No. What happened? He said, oh boy, you be married man now. Nah. You know, say married men, they don't call their phone anyhow. They don't avoid you be that one. No, so now call it. You don't avoid you. Praise the Lord. So all those ones that will influence you into another lifestyle and they teach you how to run your family, your home, then avoid them. Avoid them that will influence you negatively. Then, finally, be 
submissive to each other. Be submissive to one another. Can you read this place for me? Ephesians chapter 5. Be submissive to one another. In the fear of God, knowing your limits and learn from Jesus. How many did I say here? Look up here, look up here. The last one, number eight. Be submissive to one another in the fear of God and knowing your limits and learn from Jesus Christ. Learn from who? Jesus. What is Jesus? Sir? Jesus is love. Jesus is peace. Jesus is understanding. Jesus is happiness. Jesus is joy. Learn from Jesus. Submit to one another and then in the fear of God, know your limits, don't pass your limits, and then learn from Jesus. Ephesians chapter, chapter 5 verse 21. Can you read it for me? 21 to 23. Yeah. Submitting yourselves one to another. Submitting yourself one to another. In the fear of God. In the fear of God. Say fear of God. Say fear of God. So in all, in all, submit yourself to one another. Hold on, man. One. He said, submit yourselves to one another. In the fear of God. In the fear of God. Can I say this? When your wife cannot wash you, if your wife cannot wash you, and wash that mama pet from you, then you have problem. You know mama pet? Any young man that any time you want to do something, you call the mama first. What do you call those that kind of puppy boys? Mommy's boy. Mommy's boy. Puppy boy. Puppy dogs. So they must consult your mother first before they know what to do. And if at that time, if your wife cannot wash nothing out of you, that you guys cannot work because we have to submit to one another. Submit to one another, he said. Go ahead. Why submit yourself unto your own husband? And your wife, submit yourself unto your what? And all these things will be done in the fear of God. And what again? As unto the Lord. And also the Lord. Therefore, for the husband is the head of the wife. For the husband is the head. So we say tradition. tradition. Say tradition. tradition. Say tradition. tradition. This is tradition. The husband is the head of the wife. Even as Christ is the head of Even the Even as Christ is the head of church. And he is the savior of the body. And he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ. And yes. So let the wife be to their own husband everything. Amen. Because love your wife. Love the wife. Christ also love, love the church. And give himself. And give himself. Amen. Stop there. So this is tradition. The man is the head of the house. And Jesus is the head of the church. So wife, submit your one of yourself. Husband, submit yourself. That means there should be no argument. There should be there shall be analog. There shall be there shall be there shall be you shall reason together. Amen. There should be understanding. Nobody should hear it. There should be no fight. This reason that it they beat me because I don't want to talk. Let me be the bearer until you break my head. No, there shall be not even beating in the house. Not talk of bearing it. Because you don't endure marriage, you enjoy marriage. Start your feet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Thank you, my Father. Thank you. In Jesus Christ's name, Amen and Amen. 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 Do you take you? Do you take me, Dixie, or me, as your lovely uh, husband? As your one and only. As your one and only. Yes, I do. You know what you don't need? You just you just created a cemetery and then open different graves because the day you accept one, what has died? You know what I'm saying? The day you accept one man, other men die in your life. So you just, you just praise the Lord. 
So therefore, because he says she do, then you, this will say, I, your name, I, Dixon, for me, give you this ring, give you this ring, as a sign of my love, as a sign of my love, and commitment, and my commitment to you, to you. To I you. promise. I promise to always be there for you. To be always be there for you. To it, it always be there for you in hard time. In high time and in good time. In good time. To protect you. To protect you. In all times. In all times. You hear what she said? That's your vow. Then put your ring. Doing you are ready for it and it's ready. 
So by my permission, as we are waiting, then I now permit you, because this is my daughter, you know, I now permit you now to kiss your bride.
I've been married for years now. And I'm still married. I'm not intending breaking. I'm not intending divorcing. I intend to keep it until Christ comes in marriage. By that grace, I bless your marriage. By that understanding, I bless your marriage. By that faith, I bless your marriage. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Before you stand, give me this. If you understand me, I do nothing here without anointing. I believe God anointed so much. But when the anointing touches you, anointing is disappearing. Whatever thing you are doing, man, marriage without anointing with any annoyance. All those arguments is because there is no anointing. It is anointing but no annoyance. Amen. Anointing. But this anointing is a it's a mark and a witness that you waited. Your marriage was blessed in those presence. And that this is the last marriage within you here on this earth. By this anointing, I speak success. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. When you're still living, by that same power that God gave up to me to bless marriages and to confirm marriages. By that power, I stand on it. And I hereby officially pronounce you man and wife. Oh! 
I'm a